The Radio Theater brings you Claudette Colbert and Robert Cummings in Without Reservations. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. We bring you a star who twice before has been your opening night favorite, Claudette Colbert, in one of her most entertaining screen roles. She appears co-starred with Robert Cummings in Lasky Leroy's comedy hit, Without Reservations. The story of a girl who knows more about books than about life, but who learns about the latter very quickly in a whirlwind race across the country with two ardent suitors. Speaking of the title of our play tonight, I'm sure that this is the only theater where your favorite seat is always waiting for you without reservations and with no cost of admission as our curtain rises on Act One of Without Reservations, starring Claudette Colbert as Christopher Madden and Robert Cummings as Rusty Thomas, with Elliot Lewis as Dink. It's Bookstand. Girl novelist writes biggest bestseller since Gone with the Wind. Here is Tomorrow passes one million mark. Senate committee claims Here is Tomorrow blueprint for future world. Arrowhead Studios to film Here is Tomorrow. Flash, Cary Grant and Lana Turner to star in Dynamite bestseller. Christopher Madden, girl author to adapt own story for screen. Christopher Madden leaving today for Hollywood. Well, Miss Madden, I think we finally escaped that mob of autograph hunters. Oh, I really wouldn't have minded. As a matter of fact, <laughs> Please, Miss Madden, Madden, you better get on the train immediately. Oh, your ticket here. I can't tell you how upset Mr. Baldwin is, but like I told him, this is the best we could get for you. An upper berth to Chicago. <laughs> but I like traveling at Baldwin's, Mr. Clark. You meet the people. Yeah, nothing but the people. Well, Mr. Fogg will meet you in Chicago from Chicago West. You will have a very nice drawing room. Oh, Lord. Let us know if you need anything. I will. Goodness, Arrow at Studio is certainly taking good care of me. Oh, Miss Madden, telegram from Miss Christopher Madden. Over here. Uh, this way. Hey, son. Oh, here. Thank you, sir. It, it's from Hollywood. Oh, but Mr. Baldwin can't do that. Miss Madden, what's wrong? Listen, with deep regret, Cary Grant informs me he cannot play character of Mark Winston due to conflicting commitment. Oh, that's awful. That's just awful. But that isn't all. Grant's withdrawal gives me great idea. We would be crazy to have name actor play this role. It should be a new face. My staff already organizing night and day search for right man. Anyway, don't worry. We still have Lana Turner. Oh, oh wait a minute. Do you realize what this means? I sold my book to Arrowhead because Mr. Baldwin promised me Cary Grant. I won't have an amateur playing Mark Winston. Please get on the train, Miss Madden. Well, you, you, you call Mr. Baldwin immediately. Tell him I insist on Cary Grant. We will immediately. Better hurry, young lady. And don't forget our man in Chicago. He'll meet you at the station. No, I, I have changed my mind. Huh? No, never mind calling Mr. Baldwin. I'll send him a wire myself. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Madden. Goodbye. Get your telegram blank all right, miss? Yes, Porter, thank you. I'll have it ready for you in a few minutes. Any time, miss. Just buzz. Now, let's see. Dear Mr. Baldwin, refuse to consider unknown actor in place of Cary Grant. Please remember our agreement. There are certain things that Mark Winston stands for that only an actor of Mr. Grant's stature possibly could... He's writing a telegram, Rusty. Well, what do you know? Mind if we sit down? No, of course not. If those are your bags. Move our bags, Lieutenant Watson. Pleasure, Captain Thomas. You know what? What? You were right. Oh, sure, you chase around looking for what you want, and all the time it's sitting right in your own backyard. That's right. Three times we walked through this train, but you said there was no use knocking ourselves out. You said if we only relaxed, everything would be lovely. Yeah, it's like that story the French fellow wrote about the two kids who were looking out for the bluebird. They chased around all night trying to find it, but they didn't. Finally, they came back home, and guess what? What? They found that bluebird right in their own backyard. What happened then? Oh, the bluebird flew away. This bluebird can't fly away. You gonna do something about it? Well, sure, I'm gonna do something about it. <clears throat> hello. Hmm? Well, hello. Uh, you're, uh, up there? Uh, you mean the upper berth? Yes. I'm down here. Uh-huh. Yeah, Dink here, he sleeps over there. Uh-huh. Well, that's fine. <laughs> um, 
M- Maurice Maeterlinck is Belgian. Do we know him? Is he a Marine? Well, no, you... you he's the author of The Bluebird, the story you were just telling. He won the Nobel Prize. Oh, he deserved it. Well, he's Belgian, not French. This girl is repeating herself. Well, certainly nice the way things have turned out. You sleep up there, rusty down here, and I sleep over there. Everything's very chummy. <laughs> yes, that's what I like about traveling. People are more friendly, more relaxed. Rusty can relax practically anywhere. Oh, I know. Uh, huh? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, he seems the sort of person who is naturally friendly. Oh, if everybody could be like that. If everyone in the whole world could get together in that relaxed spirit. If they could brush aside suspicion and selfish differences and let down their back Don't you think it's and... getting a little crowded in here, Captain? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I always talk too much. Oh, no, no. You're a very good talker. But does all that yakety-yak make you a little thirsty? Come on down to the club car. We'll buy you a drink. Oh, thank you. I, I'll see you later. Oh, yeah, your, your telegram, huh? I really must get this off, and then I'd like to tidy up. Oh, good deal. We'll be waiting. We'll, well, wow. Get out of the aisle, Lieutenant, and let the lady pass. Oh, how'd you do? A beetle. Yep, a beetle. Well, we'll be waiting, miss. See you in the club car. Yes, by all means. Bluebird. Right in my own backyard. It's incredible. Oh, Potter. Yes, miss? Could I have another telegram blank, please? Dear Mr. Baldwin, after mature consideration, I subscribe fully to your plan of having unknown play part of Mark Winston. But search is unnecessary, as I have just met Mark Winston in the flesh. It's incredible, but true. I instinctively feel this dark-haired, deep-voiced marine flyer is our man. I am thrilled. How shall I proceed? Regard, Madden. La, 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 la. Oh, how'd you do? How do you do? Uh, some powder room, huh? Oh, that's my traveling bag there. Anything you need, just help yourself. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just thought I'd try to do something with this hair of mine. Me too. Uh, where are you going? Hollywood. Yeah? Got a job? Yes. Got a boyfriend in Hollywood? Uh Uh-uh. Well, what do you want to go to Hollywood for? It's full of dames. You know, you want to come down to San Diego and get a job waiting tables. Twenty-five bucks a week and two meals. And the union takes care of you. Oh, are you a union member? Oh, certainly. This fellow I go with is an organizer. That's why I joined the union. You're interested in a guy, and you got to be sympathetic with what he's doing. That's where a lot of girls miss out, you know. Oh, you're so right. A relationship without purpose or mental accord is is sterile. You bet. How's that again? (laughs) I mean, well, you see, so many girls choose a man for the excitement or the social security it gives them. Now, according to Professor Metcalf's latest book... No, no, no. There's nothing in books that'll do you a bit of good. The way I see it, you give them to a fella on the unimportant things, and then you get what you want. Oh. Now, does it hurt me if I encourage Joe with his union work? Does it cost me anything? No. And it makes him feel real good. Why, I can fix it for Joe to feel so good that when I say, why don't he relax and take me to the Ritz roof, he says, honey, you know I don't like that place. It's full of reactionaries. Joe doesn't like reactionaries? Uh Uh-uh. So I agree with him, and we go anyway. Sure, the Ritz roof is expensive, but does a fellow have any respect for a girl who's satisfied with just anything? Is he going to praise the girl who lets him save his money and burn cigarette holes in a sofa? He's going to do no such thing. Instead, he's going to go out and find a blonde. Oh, and, and she's different. You bet she's different. Yes, but what about this girl he jilted, the one who let him burn cigarette holes? Oh, she is spending nickels calling him up. And what is he saying? He is saying he is too busy. He is saying he has also been worrying about his mother, who is not feeling too good. And if she calls again, he gives her the K.O. He, he hits her? No, the brush off. Oh, the brush off. Sure. You know, that's when a fella tells a girl she is much too good for him. She should find somebody else who'd really appreciate her. Honey, when a girl gets that routine, she knows she's through, but completely. Well, I'm sorry for her. Oh, I'm not. She's a dope. You know, a girl has to look into the future, don't she? Well, then she's got to keep a man in there pitching. Hey, uh... Get a load of this. Oh, that's a beautiful orchid. Yeah. Oh, brother, would Joe get sore if he got a load of this orchid? 
right away he would start worrying about who bought it. You know, nothing like an orchid to give a girl prestige. It sent me back five bucks. Well, honey, I'm, I'm off to the club car. Friends waiting for you? Not that I know of, but there soon will be. La, 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 la. Well, hello. 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 Well, have a seat. Thank you. Well, you have. Orange juice. <laughs> Say, what's going on down there? The beetle is at it. Who? The beetle, the one with the orchid. <laughs> well, what's a beetle? Oh, beetles are very cute to look at, but you've uh, got to keep your eye on them. They make out that everything is all right. They have no angles. They just want to have a good time. Yes, sir, that's them all right. Yeah, then the first thing you know, you find them crawling around. Oh, uh, two uh, bourbons and orange juice. Right away, Kevin. Yes, you were saying? Uh, what, oh, yes, yes, beetles. Uh, they get in your hair, they climb in your pockets, they give you mental fatigue. You get mental fatigue, you can't take up Uncle's plans, you're grounded. That's what the psychiatrist in Jacksonville always said. Oh, so beetles are out, huh? Well, not exactly. You see, they... Go. Oh, I'm terribly oh, no, sorry. Quite all right. I'll pick up your book. Oh, it's all right. I've got it. I'm sorry. No. It's that book again, Dink. It sure gets around. Oh, you're familiar with it? Yeah, we picked it up in a bed in Jacksonville. Yeah, in sick bay. The fellow next to Rusty was sure giving that book a hard time. He was handling it like he had no respect for it at all. He was army. <laughs> Would someone mind telling me what my, what the book has to do with... Oh, look, Dink's getting this thing all fouled up. You see, I was reading Esquire, and this Joe in the next bed wanted to trade the book for the magazine. And Rusty said no. He said no? So Rusty kept right on reading Esquire, and the army got desperate. Drinks, Captain. Dollar thirty-five. Oh, yes, here. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, we were up to the point where the army got desperate. Yeah, that's right. Then the army offered Rusty a genuine Africa Corps helmet with a Rommel insignia. Well, that's practically a collector's item. Uh, and Rusty couldn't resist that. Well, I had to save the book from a fate worse than the army, didn't I? Perhaps it would interest you, Captain, to know that they're going to make a picture out of that book with Cary Grant and Lana Turner. You mean Cary Grant is going to play the part of that pilot? Mm-hmm. But for what reason would he do that? He always seemed like a pretty sharp fella. They're probably paying him a lot of bananas. Yeah, you know, a fella like Grant's already got a lot of bananas. Well, why shouldn't he play it? Because it would make him look silly. Silly? Certainly. Why? Because Lana Turner keeps chasing him for 400 pages and he keeps saying no. No? To Lana Turner? Well, he does. Well, is there something wrong with this pilot fella? No, there's nothing wrong with him, except he's busy fixing up the world for everybody. But can't he take care of Lana Turner first? <laughs> Look, Dink, he'd like to, but this pilot is a progressive. And Lana Turner, according to this book, is a reactionary. That's it, exactly. I know, I know, but this reactionary is not a fella. He is Lana Turner. And what difference does it make what she thinks? That's what makes it all so silly. I just don't understand. Oh, gentlemen, you seem to have missed the point entirely. The characters that Cary Grant and Lana Turner play are, are symbols. He of the future and she of the past. The clash between them is purely ideological. Look, is he a man? Well, yes. She's a woman? Yes. That's all. Oh, I know what you're thinking, both of you. You're thinking that I know nothing at all about men. Well, don't let that worry you. Neither did the character that wrote that book. All right, what would you do if, uh, if you were Mark Winston? Well, I'll tell you what I'd do if I was Mark Winston, Miss, uh, uh, say, what, what is your name? Ki uh, Kitty Clotch. Clotch? <laughs> uh, well, Miss, uh, Clotch, <laughs> if, um, if I were Mark Winston, I would behave first like Lana Turner was a woman and argue about it afterwards. Oh, what's the use? That's what I always say. Well, here's to old, uh, Clotch Clotch. Oh, hello. Shh. Everybody's asleep. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Pretty late, huh? Yes. Uh, say, can I help you get up in your berth up there? Oh, I can make it all right. I... I wonder where the ladder is. Oh, I don't know. I'll call the porter. No, I just rang a minute ago. I think he must be out somewhere. Well, I'll give you a lift. A lift? Yes, yeah, simply. I'll bend over and you step on my back. And... <laughs> Thank you very much. I I'm sure I can manage by myself. Yeah, well, I'll crawl in then. Good night. How you doing? Oh, I'm climbing up. <gasps> 
Oh, I'm terribly sorry. My, my foot slipped. Uh, yeah, well, that's all right. I'll try again. Okay. So far, so good. What you need is six weeks basic training. Uh, well, it's really very simple once you get the net. Ah! Oh! oh, I'm terribly sorry. Yeah, I, I think I'd better give you a hand. Yes, I, I think you'd better if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, how's this? There you are. Can you make it? Yes, I think so. Say, where are you going? <laughs> to my berth. No, I mean, where are you headed for? Oh, California. Well, good. Dink and I are going to San Diego. Oh, that's fine. You know what? You're much lighter than I thought. <laughs> You're much stronger than I thought. I bet I could hold you like this for 20 minutes. Oh, I'm sure you could, but I think I'd better go to bed. Oh, <laughs> well, good night then. Thanks for the boost. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. In just a moment, we'll bring you the second act of Without Reservation, starring Claudette Colbert and Robert Cummings. Mr. William Keeley returns to the microphone. Act two of our first night's presentation of Without Reservations, starring Claudette Colbert as Christopher Madden and Robert Cummings as Rusty Thomas, with Elliot Lewis as Dink. It's the following morning, and now in the station in Chicago, Miss Christopher Madden has just greeted the representative of Arrowhead Studios. Here are your tickets, Miss Madden. You'll have a drawing room on the cheap. That's fine, Mr. Fogg. Thank you. Uh, now, where is he? Our new Mark Winston. What? Oh, I know all about it, Miss Madden. Mr. Baldwin phone. Got your telegram. He said, be sure to tell you not to let that wing get out of your sight. Oh, he's most enthusiastic about your discovery. Well, he's somewhere around, Mr. Fogg. He and his friend are going down to San Diego. Oh, well, I'll have him paged. No, no. Oh, I wouldn't do that. You see, he doesn't know anything about it yet. Now, don't you worry. I'll find him. Oh, dear. If you'll just take my baggage checks and put the things on the cheek. Yes, certainly, Miss Madden. I'll wait in your drawing room. No, no, don't bother. Goodbye. Uh, but, Miss Madden. Oh, what do you know, Rusty? Look who's coming. Miss Clodge. Well, we're so happy to see you. I'm happy to see you. Say, do you suppose you could make a little purchase for us? Yeah, would you go in that store and buy us a bottle of scotch? Scotch? Isn't that a little out of character? Uh, well, we uh, decided to switch to something a little older than last week. Uh, you see, there's a sign in there, one bottle of scotch per customer, sorry. And sorry is right. But our train, it's at Dearborn Street Station. We'll be late. Oh, no, no, plenty of time. You get the scotch, we'll get the cab. If you get more than one bottle, we'll get your bus. <laughs> uh... I'm afraid it's only going to be one bottle. Yeah, strictly an amateur. Oh, but I'd like more than one bottle, please. Yeah, so would everybody. Take it or leave it, lady. I want to read my book. Oh, that book? Oh, well, after all I've done for you, the least you could do is to give me three bottles. And just what have you done for me? I wrote that book you're reading. You, Christopher Madden? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll prove it to you. Uh, what's the line you just finished? Yeah, one of us is nuts. Uh, Mark Winston looked about him. The land seemed lonely and abandoned. Lonely and abandoned. Lon yes. But in this vast and empty land, a frontier of bright new hopes arose. A target for today, a realization for tomorrow. Holy smoke! Say, will three bottles be enough, Miss Madden? Oh, three will be fine, thank you. Oh, gosh! Say, you planning to do any more writing, Miss Madden? Well, some, but I think it's all going to be rewriting. Here, let me put those bottles in the bag. No, no, thank you. I'm in a hurry. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Anytime, Miss Madden. Well, here you are. Three bottles of scotch. Well, what happened? Nothing. I, I just smiled and... Oh, now, wait. You've got a very cute smile, but it's not a three-quart smile. <laughs> yeah, and how come he called you Miss Madden? Oh, that. He was reading Here is Tomorrow, so... I said I was Christopher Madden. And he fell for it? Hook, line, and scotch. <laughs> hey, you're pretty sharp, you know it? Oh, sure. Where's my bus? Oh, gee, that's right. Will you settle for a taxi? Now, right now, I'd settle for a rickshaw. You may not care, but we're going to miss our train. <laughs> There, 
Yeah, you see, we got to the station in plenty of time. Take your bag, sir. Oh, yeah, Sunrise Limited. Yes, sir. Sunrise Limited? Aren't you going on the Chief? Uh-uh. Uh, Section 5, car 63. Yes, sir. Uh, what's yours? Mine? Uh, uh, I, I think I'm in car 63, too. Uh, say, where, where are your bags? Oh, I sent them on ahead. They're on the train. Oh, well, good. The Chief is now ready for departure on track 7. What's the matter, Miss Klotz? You look pale. Yeah, what's the matter? Oh, it's nothing, nothing. It's just that I always get such a thrill when I hear the chief announced. I wish we were on the chief. Oh, you don't know how tough it is getting reservations these days. No, but something tells me I'm going to find out pretty soon. Well, we're on our way. It's going to be nice, the three of us together. <laughs> it's getting to be a habit. Well, some habits can be mighty healthy. That's the way it is sometimes. You meet some people and it's like you've known them all your life. That's what you told that beetle in Dallas. Tickets, well, I didn't say it. She said it. After we had the bourbon and vodka. Tickets, please. Hmm? Oh, for me and the captain. Thank you. Tickets, please. Miss, your ticket? Hmm? My ticket? Oh, it's right in my purse here. It's, uh... Oh, no, that's ridiculous. I had it here. Oh, how could I have misplaced it? I don't know. Uh, perhaps you have some form of identification, Miss... Uh... Uh, Clotch. Miss Clotch. Oh, now, isn't that funny? I... I just don't seem to have a thing with my name on it. Oh, uh, where's your luggage? Maybe, maybe it got on the wrong train. Hmm. Very funny, Miss Clotch. You may not know it, but there's a serious penalty for riding trains without tickets. And with servicemen. Yes, I know. Uh, really, I, I did have it, but something just happened. Something always happens. Well, I can vouch for Miss Clotch, Conductor. And I can vouch for him, Conductor. And I suppose you, Miss, can vouch for him. Uh-huh. I should stop the train and put you off right here. But I'll be very glad to buy a compartment or a berth. No compartments or berths. You mean she'll have no place to sleep? We'll find her a place in the coach. Oh. But remember, Miss Clotch, if the space has been sold further west, off you go. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Come along. We'll see what we can do. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you for breakfast, gentlemen. It was delicious. You know, those are the first words you've spoken in five minutes. I've been thinking. Why? Oh, it wouldn't hurt either of you to be serious once in a while, too, you know. Just look out the window. Miles and miles of land, literally uncultivated. Well, it won't be that way long. Come the private airplane, people will start spreading out. It'll be wonderful to be part of the new world. Oh, I don't think it'll uh, change as much as some people think. Of but course. it must. Well, Why? Oh, for too long we've had that, uh, that laissez-faire attitude toward executive operation. No, you see, we must educate ourselves to share the responsibilities as well as the advantages of citizenship. I read that book too, remember? Certainly made an impression on you what that dopey writer had to say. But it's a lot of hooey fixing everybody up when they let out their first squawk. Giving them pointers on good government between feeding bottles and teaching them in school to be good little ladies and gentlemen and not smack each other around. Oh, now it's very easy to make fun of everything. Listen, Miss Clotch. Did you ever hear of the fellows who first came over to this country? They found nothing but a howling wilderness filled with characters who painted their faces. Do you think the pioneers filled out little forms and sent in reports saying the savages were being a little savage? Did they have insurance for their crops in their old age? They did not. They looked at their wives and their kids in their houses. Then they looked up to the sky and they said, thanks, God. We'll take it from here. Well, they were rugged fellas. Yeah, they were. Oh, you and I are talking about two entirely different things. Dink, you know what? What? This girl is stubborn. I'm not stubborn. <laughs> oh, I ought to know better. Never argue with a Marine or a railroad conductor. Hmm? What about the conductor? Oh, I'll be leaving you gentlemen soon. But I thought you had that all fixed. Uh-uh. Some service personnel are coming aboard at La Junta. And since I had no ticket, off I go. But that's awful. I told the conductor I was Christopher Madden. You, you know, yeah, like in the liquor store. But it seems all the conductor reads is timetables. Well, that, that, that's awful. That's what I said. Take over, Dink. I'll fix everything right now. Well... I sure fixed everything, didn't I? I wish you wouldn't worry about me. I don't know. It doesn't seem right leaving you all alone in La Hunta. It, it isn't like you had Dink and me looking out for you anymore. Will I hear from you? Sure. You write and tell us how you make out. Where to? Ritz Hotel, San Diego. They know me there. 
Will you be in San Diego long? Uh, you, you'll have to ask the Navy Department that. They tell us anything. All aboard! Well, give my love to Dink. Well, what about me? You... I'm... I'm awfully happy I met you, and... And, and what? Your, your train. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Goodbye. Oh, we, ne- we never say goodbye. We, we just... You've got lipstick. Yeah. And your train. You've missed your train. Well, now, what do you know? Hey. Fancy meeting you here in La Junta. Dang. It's La Hunter, you dope. Come on over here. Well, well, Rusty, what's going to happen now? Uh, well, uh, we'll put you on the next train. Yes, but what about you? Well, we got to get to San Diego tomorrow night. We'll go over to the base and see if we can catch a plane. We have a date. Oh. Yeah, a couple of swell... Uh, uh, sisters. <laughs> yeah, sisters of friends. Oh, yeah, that's right. Friends of the family. You know. Yes, I'm afraid I do. Well, come on, let's, let's grab a cab and see what goes. You two wait for me out here. I won't be long. Yeah, you. Dink. Hmm? All these planes, I guess you'll get out all right. Well, Rusty and I usually fly in luck. Don't take him too seriously. Why not? I don't know. It's just that you can't tell how Rusty feels about anyone. Good news, Captain. We can get you and Lieutenant Thomas out within the hour. Uh, within the hour, huh? Well? Well, I, uh, I guess we uh, were really not in such a hurry as we thought we were. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, all the same, Lieutenant. Uh, looking out of the window, she seems very attractive, sir. Yeah, uh, hmm? Good luck. <laughs> Well, what goes, Rusty? Boy, our flaps are sure down. Storm over the Rockies. All flights canceled indefinitely. Sure beats everything. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, uh, back to town, I guess. Uh, buzz a taxi, Dink. Oh, no, let's walk. Huh? I feel as if I've been sitting for days. You know, Dink, this girl has a mean streak in her. You mean because she's glad we're stuck? Guess what? What? You're, You're right. right. <laughs> <laughs> And you're the girl who wanted to walk to town. Well, how did I know it was going to rain? Come on, get under this tree. Maybe someone will give us a ride. In what? I haven't seen a car since we started. Oh, look, somebody's coming. Yeah, a pedestrian. He's talking to himself. Maybe he's crazy. Well, certainly he's crazy. Why would he be walking in the rain? Too much, I tell you, I can't stand it. Something wrong, mister? Wrong. I'm loaded with misery. Well, unload it on us, brother. Oh, what's the use? Maybe you could help me push it. Push what? The Asata, gentlemen. What's that? It's a car. Italian, I think. You've got a car down there? Well, what are we waiting for? It all started when that actor broke down in front of our house. He was going to Hollywood, wanted to arrive there in grand style with that miserable Asada. My wife liked it. She liked the upholstery, so I bought it. She didn't care about transmission, connecting rods, or clutch. She liked the upholstery. Every time something happens to it, it's special and expensive. Never want to see that car again. There it is, the ingrate. Well, I'll go take a look. I'm cold. Oh, 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 sit in the car, miss. It has a heater. It has everything except an engine. (laughs) Are you three together? Uh, why, yes, I guess so. But maybe you'd like to buy a car together. A car without an engine? If we wanted to buy a car, we'd go to a second-hand lot. And what do they got? A bunch of lemons, a lot of hopped-up wrecks? Say, how much do you want for this car? Uh, how much would you offer? I have $300 in traveler's checks. What would you want with this car? Well, I'm going to Hollywood. I thought it would be nice to make a great big splash. Oh, I can assure you it'll splash all right. Except I can't let it go for 300 Why, well, I spent that much on telegrams waiting for spare parts to arrive from Chicago. But the, uh, the captain here has a valuable item. Oh? A genuine collector's item. What's that? Oh, oh the helmet. Oh, yes. Uh, with a genuine Rommel insignia, yes. A helmet? Well, you don't say. It's right here in my bag. Yes, sir. Now, just take a look at this. You couldn't buy a helmet like this for 150 bananas. Oh, I'm not interested in money. But a real souvenir from a real hero of the Marines. Friends, the car is yours. Well, what do you know? Dink! What? We've bought a car. Hey, it's, it's, it's running. Well, sure it's running. But what fixed it? 300 bucks. Well, 
You know, it's really a nice car. Better in the train. Cozier. I think so, too. Next town we hit, I want to make a phone call. Who do you want to call? Friend or something? Not Dink. Well, I just don't want her talking to strangers. Now, I promise it won't be a stranger. What is the next town, anyway? A rat town, New Mexico. Yep, with a J. Hello? Hello? Mr. Baldwin? Miss Madden. Oh, for heaven's sake, Miss Madden, where are you? I'm in Rat Town, New Mexico. No, but that's impossible. We expected you here in Hollywood this afternoon. I've arranged a big reception for you. We've sent out notices to every paper in the country. Oh, you can't do this to me. How did this happen? I missed the chief, so I took the Sunrise Limited as far as La Hunter. Why, La Hunter? Well, that's, that's where I was put off the train. I didn't have a ticket. And anyway, I, I think the conductor thought I was a beetle. A what? I'll tell you all about it when I see you. It doesn't sound very good, Miss Madden. No, don't worry. I'm not using my real name. Nobody knows who I am, not even the Marines. The Marines? How many have you got? Only two. Rusty Thomas, he's Mark Winston, and his pal Dink. Dink's driving my car. Never mind, Miss Madden, never mind. Just tell me where I can get in touch with you. But you can't. I don't want to take the chance. Rusty mustn't find out who I am yet. You're sure you're not letting your personal feelings run away with you? Well, of course I am. Well, we'll be there Friday or early Saturday, Mr. Baldwin. Goodbye. Uh, Miss Madden. Miss Madden. Oh, this is horrible. Miss Scuttlebrap. Mr. Potter. Potter. Yes, Mr. Baldwin. Call me, Chief. I'm glad you did. Have I something to show you? Look at this newspaper right on the front page. In order to make the early edition, I had to give them the reception story a little ahead of time. Oh, you did. Well, it may yeah. interest you, Mr. Potter, to know that Miss Madden will not be here this afternoon. What? Won't be here. No, she was kicked off a train. She's in Raton, New Mexico. Call the mayor. Call the governor. Call everything off. Oh, why don't I just cut my throat? Do you think Dink can fix that motor again? Oh, and Dink's first class mechanic. He'll fix it. Why don't you get off that haystack? Why don't you come up? <laughs> Maybe I will. Ah, yeah, you are. That's better. Say, uh, what made you want to buy a car like that? Mm, maybe I just wanted to show off that I could buy it if I wanted to. You know what? What? I don't think that's why you bought it at all. Want me to tell you why you bought it? Mm, no, I don't think so. Maybe I won't like why I bought it. <laughs> Move over. Hello. How do you do? Am I crowding you? Mm-hmm. Do you mind? Mm-mm. Warm, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's the joke? Oh, nothing. Oh, now, come on. Now, what made you laugh? Just you and me. I laughed because I knew you were going to put your arms around me, and you did. <laughs> well, I didn't exactly expect to surprise you. <laughs> I know. And I guess you uh, now have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to do. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Any objections? Mm-mm. Did that uh, kiss mean anything to you? Yes. What? Nice. Just nice? Very nice. You mean it could have been nicer? Mm-hmm. How? Oh, if it had happened under different circumstances. You kissed me because, because we're out here with the moon shining and a lot of stars winking at us. All right, go on. You see, if we could know each other better, if we could be sure of what's inside of us, our tastes, our interests, our objectives... That wouldn't have made it any better. Oh, yes, it would have. You're wrong, and I can prove it to you. But I don't see that... <clears throat> I told you I could prove it to you. Oh, you're unfair. Rusty, things like kisses shouldn't be discussed. You, you, you make them sound like they're laboratory tests. I make them seem like... Well, you're the one who's always analyzing everything. I'd be perfectly happy not to say another word about it. Well, that's all right with me. You're a little crazy, you know. Rusty, no, please. I don't want to kiss you again. Now, stop it. Shh, shh, shh. No, Rusty, don't you see? It's, it's just not good enough to be carried away like this by, by, by an errant impulse. You know I like you. I, I'm very fond of you, but I believe that you should... Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I wish I'd met you before you read that book. Hey, Dink. All finished. Well, how can you be all finished? You're still pounding away. Oh, I fixed it ten minutes ago. 
I've just been knocking these tools together waiting for you and Rusty to finish. <laughs> well, we're finished. Definitely. <laughs> In a moment, we'll bring you the third act of Without Reservation, starring Claudette Colbert and Robert Cummings. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Our opening night continues with Act Three of Without Reservations, starring Claudette Colbert as Christopher Madden and Robert Cummings as Rusty Thomas. <laughs> In a burst of mechanical exuberance, Kit's car has borne our weary travelers steadily westward to Albuquerque. But the long ride has done nothing to improve Rusty's disposition. Aren't you getting tired? I'm sure Dink would take over if I'm you... not tired. Well, I am. You want to stop? No. The Asada wants to stop. The Asada needs a little water. Oh, what's the matter with you? Nothing. Well, then why sit there looking like, like... Like what? Oh, I don't know, but it's awfully depressing. Something tells me it's time for me to be the life of the party, so I'll sing for you. Do you by any chance know it must be jelly cause jam don't shake like that? Oh, why don't you shut up? Okay, I'll shut up. But here's a gas station and we're stopping. Okay, okay. Even gas? Yeah, about 35 gallons. Oh, look, across the street. A hotel. Would you like to stop overnight? Wouldn't it be wonderful to sleep in a bed for a change? Well, let's see how much dough we got. Wait a minute. Hmm? Well, well, where is it? My purse. It's gone? Well, it certainly isn't here, but what... Oh, oh fine. You mean you've... Uh... Yes, I know. It, it's probably just where I left it. Remember the tea room in Santa Fe? <sighs> well, well, well. <sighs> But all my money and papers are in it. Wait a minute. Couldn't I cash a check at the hotel? Sure, if you're registered. Well, then what are we worried about? Gentlemen, you're my guests for the night. The best rooms they've got. Can you sign the register, please? You have some baggage? Yes, it's outside in the car. My two friends are out there. Yeah, Ma. Uh, bring the bags from the car for Miss... Miss, Miss Christopher Madden? Not the Christopher Madden? Yes. Harry! Harry, this is Christopher Madden. Who's Christopher Madden? Why, well, she's the girl who wrote that marvelous book, Here is Tomorrow. Oh, oh, that one. I gather you didn't like it? I don't read. She didn't use to either until she joined that darn literary club. Oh, don't you listen to him, Miss Madden. Oh, I can't wait to tell them. The girls, they'll be thrilled to death. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'll have to ask you to keep my identity a secret. You see, I'm traveling under the name of Kit Clotch. Not even my companions know who I am. You see, she's ashamed because of that book. <laughs> well, no, not exactly. I, but I have certain reasons. Oh, Miss Madden, if there's anything, anything I can do for you. Well, actually, there is. I'd like to cash a $50 check. Of course. I'll need a blank check. Oh, I'm so excited. Just think, Christopher Madden. Oh, she's doing here. Oh, I've got to get here. But, yeah, but where is she now, Bertha? Shh, please. What? She and her friends are in the dining room having breakfast. Oh. Christopher Madden? Isn't that wonderful? Look, here's the check I cashed for last night. Oh. That's her signature. We'll all get her signature. See? We've all brought our copies of Here is Tomorrow. Oh, dear. Girls, I told you. I promised her I wouldn't tell a soul. <gasps> Oh, well, it's not my fault if one of you happens to recognize oh, her. No. Oh, no. Oh, Mr. Gibbs. I hear you're telling everybody that Christopher Madden's staying here. Oh, I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Gibbs. And I'll thank you not to write it up for your newspaper. Don't worry, Mrs. Randall, I won't. Because the real Christopher Madden couldn't possibly be here. Well, why couldn't she? Didn't you read the morning paper? There are certain news services, ladies, that send little news items all over the country. Would you like me to read this one to you? Listen. 
Hollywood, California. Christopher Madden, young author of the sensational bestseller, Here is Tomorrow, arrived in Hollywood today. That's yesterday. Henry Baldwin, who bought the picture rights to the book, has given a reception worthy of the Hollywood tradition. Among the celebrities Bertha. present... Oh, it Bertha. can't be. It can't. Bertha! Bertha, what have you done? I cashed her check. That's what I've done. Oh, I gave her $50. Oh, Whose check? Christopher Madden's. I mean, uh, Mr. Gibbs, what are you doing? What you should have done last night. I'm calling the police. <laughs> Flash, Albuquerque, New Mexico. The police have just arrested an unidentified woman who registered in a local hotel under the name of Christopher Madden, famous author. The real Miss Madden happens to be in Hollywood. But what's the matter, Mr. Baldwin? Get me a plane, anything, charter something. Christopher Madden's been arrested. We're going to Albuquerque. Once. You want something, lady? How long do I have to stay in this terrible cell? I told you, lady. I don't know. <sighs> but it's all a ghastly mistake. I am Christopher Madden. You are? Yes. Well, in that case, you have nothing to worry about. Hey, oh. Bob, let her out now. You mean now? That's right. They put up her bail. Judge just signed the paper. You don't say. But who put up my bail? Kit. <gasps> oh, Rusty. Yeah, we're sorry it took so long. You shouldn't do things like this. Oh, Rusty. In Chicago, it was a swell trick to get us a few quarts of scotch, but... But, but signing someone else's name to a check... Oh. Rusty, you, you've been worried about me? Well, certainly I've been worried about you. The minute you're out of my sight, boom, in jail. But, Rusty, you, you, you've been so angry with me. You're not angry now, are you? Uh-uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not angry at her anymore. Now, can we please get out of here? Rusty, if we're going to get out of town on that bus... Bus? What about the Asada? I'll tell you all about it on the way back to the hotel. Come on, on. Yes, but don't you see, I can't leave town. I'm out on bail. That would be adding felony to felony. Look, just how do you think we got the dough for that bail? Oh, dear, I forgot to ask. We sold the Asada, see? We sold it to a lady who thinks we'll be around for some time, but we won't be around for some time because the little pink slip, you know, the certificate of ownership, it was in your purse, the one you left in Santa Fe. Oh. And when the lady finds out about it, she's not going to be very happy. Hey, 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 look, that crowd, they're after us. Yeah, quick, we can duck down here. Oh, look, there's Mrs. Randall. They've all got books, all those women. Maybe they couldn't find any rocks. Oh, wait a minute, it's not what you think at all. Oh, Miss Madden. Oh, forgive me. It was all Charlie Gibbs' fault. Smile, please, Miss Madden, just a picture or two. Huh? And the literary club will send you a memorandum with our formal apologies, Miss Madden. We'd sure like a statement, Miss Madden. Miss Madden has nothing to say. Who are you? Oh, Mr. Baldwin, how are you? Oh, this is awful, Miss Madden. How did this happen? I don't. No, really, I didn't do anything. All I did was to tell them I was Christopher Madden. But don't worry, she won't do it again. Who's this? Is this the flyer you wired me about? Yes, it is. You, uh, wired about me? Look, I think I'd better introduce everybody. This is Mr. Henry Baldwin, the Hollywood producer, and this is Captain Rusty Thomas and Lieutenant Dink Watson. How do you do? How do you do? Well, now I know everybody but you. Who are you? I'm Christopher Madden. He does look like Mark Winston. Son, we're going to make a test of you. You should look wonderful in Technicolor. Rusty, you know what? What? They're trying to make an actor out of you. An actor? Come on, Dink. Oh, no, Rusty. Rusty, wait. Yes, Miss Madden. You can't leave me. No? Who says so? Not after what's happened between us. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I don't want a woman who's trying to tell the world what to do. I don't want even a woman who's trying to tell me what to do. I want a, a little Miss Clotch who's kind of helpless and she's cute and... Oh, forget it. Come on, Dink, let's join the Marines. You there, Rusty? Yeah, I'm here. Well, I just saw the Colonel. We'll be here in San Diego for another month yet. Another month? Oh, great. I think it is. That means I can spend another weekend in Hollywood. Boy, she's a swell gal, isn't she? I said, boy, she's a swell gal, isn't she? Who? Kit, you know who. Oh, come on, Rusty. Let down your flaps. If you won't see her, the least you could do is drop her a line. Why? Well, well, to find out how she's doing. Well, I can read, can't I? I can listen to the radio, can't I? That's all I read and that's all I listen to. Kit Madden rewriting story. Kit Madden sleeps in pajamas. Kit Madden dances at Ciro's with Paul Gill. Paul Gill and Kit Madden, the Hollywood track. I'll tell you how she's doing. She's doing great. That Paul Gill, he's the one who's going to play Mark Winston. Well, what's wrong with that? He's an actor. Oh, shut up. Maybe he's a good Joe. Well, if you won't write to her, I will. Uh, 
How do you spell kit? With a J like in LaJunta. May I come in, Kit? Hello, Mr. Baldwin. Busy, eh? Making all those changes I didn't want. Oh, but they're good changes. I've learned an awful lot since I wrote that book. Uh, Kit, about you and Paul Gill, you're not going to marry him, are you? Are you worried? Oh, it'd break my heart, but it's your hearse. <laughs> no, it isn't going to be. Atta girl. Oh, uh, did you ever hear from that fellow who looked good in Technicolor? No, why? Oh, passing thought. You know, he was the kind of character I'd like to know better. So would I. I'm working on it. Hmm, I see. You know, I met a girl on a train once with a white orchid. She told me something I hope I'll never forget. She said... You've got to keep a fellow on his toes. You've got to keep him worried and upset and make him jealous. Something in that, all right. Oh, uh, thanks for not marrying Paul Gill. <laughs> They're in the paper again, Rusty. Kit Madden and Paul Gill. <sighs> Kit Madden and Paul Gill. It's getting to be like Abbott and Costello. <laughs> Give me a menu. Well, at least he does something. He's not like you. Growing sour and sour every day. Uh, what's it going to be, boys? Oh, oh, it's you. It is? Sure. <laughs> Say, didn't I see you on the train to Chicago? How'd you know I was working here? We did. Well, how are you, Miss, Miss? Uh, sure. Consuela, sure. Uh -huh. I used to be Consuela Callahan, but I changed. You did, huh? Yeah, why not? If Kit Clotch can change to Christopher Madden, I can too. Gee, she sure has done all right. Changes her name, writes a book, and what happens? She's in every gossip column in the country. Ham and eggs, toast, and coffee. You know, uh, this is my last day as a waitress. Oh? Getting married, huh? Oh, no. I'm going to write a book, too. La, 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 la. Have you heard from her lately? Huh? Who? You know who, Kit. Kit? Oh, sure, sure. I got a letter this morning. Listen. Uh, <clears throat> dear Dink, it says, a number of fine-looking beetles have applied for your next weekend, but forgive me if we don't make it a foursome. I was very sorry to hear about Rusty. Yes, he really sounds very dull now. Can't you encourage him to get out a little more? There must be some nice beetles in San Diego. Are there any good books Rusty would like me to send him? Because if Dink, so... you're going to write her a letter. I'm going to write her a letter. And you're going to write her what I tell you to write her. She's got a nerve. Pulling that USO routine on me. You tell her that I can get all the nice girls that I want, and I know where to find them. You know where to find them. Yes, and I know something else. Everything she's doing, she's doing to make me jealous. To make you jealous. And you know what I'm going to do about it? Get jealous. <laughs> I am. Take a letter. Yes, sir. Dear Miss Madden. Uh... I'll see you later, Dink. Where are you going? Where do you think I'm going? I'm going to send her a wire and tell her what I think of her. Never mind, Alma. I'll get it. Hello? This is Western Union. I have a message for Christopher Madden. This is she. The message reads, Nobody asked me, but I'll be there at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Signed, Rusty. Have you got it? Have I got it? No, no, I haven't got it. I mean, well, say it again. What? The, the name. Rusty. R-U-S-T-Y. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Alma! Alma! Yes, miss? I have a guest coming at 4 o'clock. Will you have the guest room ready and fix some cocktails and, and come up and help me get dressed? I'm too excited. I, oh, no, I'm too nervous. Oh, yes, miss, right away. 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock. And Alma! Search the apartment. Find every copy of Here's Tomorrow and burn it. How do I look, Alma? Oh, miss. Oh, thank you, Alma. And the white orchid. Oh, there's nothing like an orchid, Alma, to give a girl prestige. It's him, miss. The Marine. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Miss Clotch. Hello, darling.
this is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood.